I came here because my choice was simple. Live or die. My species is dying. Why are you telling me this? You are vital to the mission. Go. Take him. Now. We are here at the International Bo Boxing Hall of Fame with some of the best fighters in history, and we're joined right now by a man who has a real good case to make for being the best fighter in the world today, Terence Bud Crawford. How you doing, man? How you doing? All right, so let's see. What's going on with you? Is there anything anyone's talking about, about fights you might have coming up? I can't think. Oh, right. <laughs> Errol Spence, do you have any news as to how close that fight is? Not really. Nothing's really, you know what I mean, set in stone or you know, any dates or anything thus far. Uh, but we're definitely working on that fight to happen. And w what would that mean for you? Is that Do you feel like this is the perfect time for that fight, that it really should happen now? Yes, uh, I, do, I do believe this is the perfect time, being that it's for all the marbles, it's for Undisputed, you know, so uh, this is a big moment for not only myself, but for Errol Spence Jr. as well to make you know, history in his own right. Last time we saw you, you had a great performance against Sean Porter. Last time we saw Errol, he had a great performance against old Dennis Ugas. What did you think of that performance of his? Oh, he did great. You know, I thought he made the adjustments that he had to make to uh, get the job done, and he won in tremendous fashion, and congratulations to him. <laughs> Do you, tell me if you agree with this assessment, that you guys are obviously both elite fighters, he seems more like a guy who comes in with his plan A, and that's his plan, and that's the way he fights, whereas you are more versatile and can shift plans and make adjustments. Would you say that that's accurate? Well, I think he make adjustments as well. You know, when one thing don't work, he, you know, adjusts and make, you know, matters into his own, take matters into his own hands and make the right moves at the right time to, get the job done like myself you know I feel like you know you got two great fighters in a prime you know uh, fighting for all the marbles it's gonna be a exciting fight and I just can't wait for it to happen I want to ask you also about up-and-coming guy who fights on Showtime a lot Jerome Boots Ennis in your weight division what do you think about Boots and what's the prospect of maybe down the line meeting him at some point well Boots is a, a tremendous talented guy you know uh, I've been watching them in the amateurs, you know, like I was watching uh, Errol Spence, uh, very talented, go both ways, very strong, you know, nose boxing. He's going to be a, a force to reckon with. And me and him later down the line, you know, if that, you know, come on my table and it's a right fight for me, you know, I'm taking it all. I'm taking it all. You, you say down the line, if you were in charge of Boots' career, is he ready for the best yet, or would you take it, take take some more progression fights before he tries to step in there with a guy like you? Or well, me, well, me personally, you know, if I was handling him, I would, you know, whatever he wants to do. At this point in time, you know, he uh, proven that he belongs in the top echelon, you know, with the fights that he uh, fought, that he deserved a shot. Uh, not saying that he beat a uh, lead fighter yet, you know, in a welterweight division, but the guys that he had fought to get him to this point right now, uh, he passed the test with flying colors. So, you know, we never know until he get in there with the likes of, you know, the elite. We're here at the International Boxing Hall of Fame. There's a real good chance that you'll end up being inducted here in, in a few years. But what is it like for you now to be here, especially when we've got three classes all at once being inducted, some great names, you know, Roy, James Tony, Bernard, so many different names. What's the, the experience been like for you so far? Oh, man, I'm just taking it all in, you know, because I know uh, one day it'll be myself up there, you know, getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. So. You know, this is my first year here, and, you know, I'm just excited to be around all those great fighters and uh, brush elbows with them, you know, just to 
you know, be so excited that it's going to be me one day. Yeah. How is it with the, all the fans as well? Like, there's this great interaction here between fighters and fans. And has it been a bit eye opening t to you to see how many fans are always here and, and how excited they are to see everyone? Oh, not at all. You know, uh, boxing fans is great fans all over the world. And this is a big moment for, for these fighters to be inducted into the Hall of Fame where their name will be remembered for you know, eternity until, you know, they kids' kids is, is deceased. So, you know, uh, it's a must that, you know, the fans, the true boxing fans come out and support these individuals. I, I think most people would say that a fight between you and Errol Spence is the legacy fight, the, the defining fight for you. Up to this point in your career, if someone has never seen Bud Crawford fight and you wanted to point them to one fight on YouTube, what do you think is your greatest legacy defining performance to this point in your career that you would ask someone to watch? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> you can, they got to have a lot of time yeah, carved out. <laughs> it, me personally, I feel like you can pick any, you know, championship fight that I've fought in, you know, and you can, you know, make your own assessments because each fight is different than the other. You know, I felt like I showed a little bit of of this and this fight, a little bit of that and that fight. Uh, this fight may be more exciting than this fight. This fight I might have got hit a little more that made for a, a better exciting fight. This fight I might have boxed a little more. So it's just, you know what I mean, what you prefer. Right. Becoming the first to knock out Sean Porter. A few guys had beaten him, but nobody had knocked him out. Does that maybe stand, stand apart? Was that a particularly satisfying win for you to end it that way? Uh, it was it was it was satisfying, but at the same time, like I said before, you know, I never intended to fight Sean Porter, being that we are good friends. Uh, I intended to fight all the other welterweights, you know. So I really I really don't, you know, get any like up the feelings over beating a, a friend and Sean Porter like that. It was just business. Yeah, it was just business. Uh, I got to say, I've been fortunate enough to be ringside a lot of fights around the world. I'm not sure I was ever at a better atmosphere than your first big homecoming fight in Omaha against Gamboa. That night was off the hook. What do you remember about that? Oh, man, that, that, that fight was so electrifying. It was like, you know, you really couldn't even hear yourself think, you know, and every fight since then, you know, in my hometown and Lincoln have got bigger. But, you know, the atmosphere of Terrence Crawford, Yuri Elkis, Gamboa was, you know, second to none. And you might have the loudest family cheering section I've ever seen ringside <laughs> at fights. Are you, do you hear them going nuts when you're fighting or are you so dialed in you don't, you don't hear Actually, I'm, I'm so dialed in, like, you know, the only person I hear is my coach. You know, like everything else is a blur. It's just rah, 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 like staticky, you know, but you know, that's the only person I hear is my coaches. You know, other than that, you know, everything is a blur. Well, one, one other question I wanted to ask you is, you're probably the most natural switch hitter in boxing. And, and I'm curious about like what the thought process is. Is it just, the moment the bell rings, you decide what to do. Do you like to start off? You seem like you like to start orthodox, but at some stage you're going to switch to southpaw. Do you just see what happens and, and what feels best? I don't know. It's just something that, that just happens. Okay. You know, there's fights like when I fought Thomas Delorme, I never switched. Hmm. You know, there's fights, you know, like what, uh, Ndongo and Felix Diaz, I stay southpaw. Hmm. You know, so. I just think it's just, you know, what, what we prepare and training and what just come natural. You know, I'm so uh, firm on just being authentic and natural and letting my body just tell me what to do because, you know, I train so hard, everything just come in a blink of an eye, like where I don't even have to think about it. So, you know, that's just me. Right. So last thing that I want to ask you about is, the pound for pound list. Obviously, fighters hate rating themselves because if you say I'm number one, you sound like an egotist and nobody wants to say I'm not number one. But there's been a lot of movement lately. Canelo lost. 
in a way looked unbelievable against Donaire. How do you look at that picture at the top? Do you do you care if people call you number one? Is that is that important to you? And do you think it is a, a real tough era to separate yourself from some of these guys? Well, I actually know I'm number one. There's no if ands buts about it. You know, I've been number one for years in my eyes. You know, and when you ask any diehard boxing fan, they'll say Terrence Crawford number one. You know, uh, in a way, he he's looked good in his fights. Uh, Canelo looked good in his fights, except this last one. Uh, we all look good in our fights, you know, but for 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 them to not give me my just due, you know, they put a little fire on the flame for this next fight, you know, me to prove and show the world that I'm really number one when I say I'm number one. Now now I feel bad. I like accused you unintentionally of having a big ego if you say you're number one, but I guess I guess you're okay with that. Yeah, I'm not, I I wouldn't say it's a big ego. I would just say it's confident. You know, and I I feel like everything that I've done, you know, thus far have shown that. You know, um, stopping everybody in the welterweight division, never having a close fight, you know, uh, dominating every opponent that I ever faced. You know, I think that's, you know, showing that I'm number one, you know, moving up weight divisions and conquering them one after another. You know, I, I feel like that, you know, go hand in hand with being number one pound for pound fighter in the world, you know, not just fighting in one or two weight classes and, you know, getting a win, you know, it's dominating from one division to another division to another division. Right. So before we let you go then, do you have a parting message for Errol Spence as he considers stepping in the ring with the pound for pound number one? <laughs> no, not really. You know, uh, he know what to expect. I know what to expect. And, you know, and that's going to make for a great, exciting fight for the fans and you so. Great. Well, we're really looking forward to it. We are hoping that deal gets done and we see you in the ring against Errol. It'll be fantastic. But uh, for the moment, just enjoy your weekend at the Hall of Fame. And thanks so much for chatting with us. Oh, for sure. Thanks. I came here because my choice was simple, live or die. My species is dying. Why are you telling me this? You are vital to the mission. Go, take him, now.